Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, welcome back to Wednesday uh, Connection. We know that uh, we had uh, obviously the the Pesach Passover time, and obviously the time to go inside in Pesach and to really clean up from inside. And what are we expecting right now? We know that Pesach, obviously, is the activation of that, is the first day or two. That's when you receive all the light that you need for, for, for this year, the, for the vessel, meaning. And, and then that light, called the light of Gadlut, light of greatness, leaves, and then slowly, slowly comes back in with the help of the counting of the Omer, which is the 49 days of counting. Counting is also, you not know, just like to count as a number, but count meaning be two things. How accountable we are with our spiritual work, right? You said you're going to do it. Are you accountable that you're going to do it? That's every day you need to be accountable, which means the Creator depends on you. Or in, 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 a, in, a, in a way, we have to understand it's not dependent on us, but in a way, you know, trusting you with its most powerful source, which is your soul. Therefore, a lot of our work in the next uh, seven weeks, obviously one, the first week of Passover, and then there's other six weeks of the counting of the Omer, which is build trust with the Creator, build accountability, right? You said something you're going to do, you follow up. And then, uh, 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 can we count on you, right? Is, can, can people can count on you in life, you know, and stuff like that. This is something that every day you want to work on. And obviously not to limit, because counting is also limiting. So it's almost like the antidote against limitations. Second thing is, every day, what do you count? Every day you, you it's almost like a counting. Right? You do an accounting. You do like a, a, a calculations as far as like, okay, how much I want in my life and what do I give up? Right? What do I give in? What do I reduce? What do I take a, a less a, a, and what do I take upon myself more? This is the time to do that in the Omer. We have that, <coughs> we have these weeks, we're going to speak about them, but now we're in the week of what we call the week of Gvura. In the, in the counting of the Omer. The first week was Chesed, and then we go Gvura, Tiferet, and, and so. We are in the week of Gvura, the week that we want to be brave enough or, or strong enough to strengthening what we really want, to strengthening our desire to what we really want to do in life. You know, that is, this is the time. In this week, we still have Passover was still uh, Sunday, Monday. But now we are heading to the Shabbat. And in this particular Shabbat, we're going to read Achrei Mot, after the death of the two sons of Aharon. We know they, 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 they died or left the physical world. And then they got too close to the Creator Almost that's how they say uh, it's written, and then that light was too strong for them to handle, and they had to leave this physical world. Now, if you read in the Zohar, uh, uh, if you read literally, mean that this represents Yom Kippur. This is the reading that we read in Yom Kippur. Achrei Mot, we're reading in Yom Kippur to indicate that in Yom Kippur, again religiously, you read about the death of the sons of Aaron. And you shed a tear, and because of that, you connected to Yom Kippur. Part of the religiosity around it. But we know it's completely different, and it's, it's, it's almost like a happy occasion, you know. Because the death of the two sons of our own, you know, represent many, many things. But what we want to receive today... What we want to receive, and again, no coincidental, it comes right after Passover. It's the death 
of, uh, again, son represent, you know, right column, daughter represent left column. Two sons of our one represent the, the right energy, the, the sharing energy. But, you know, we all need to be, in a way, achrei mot, after the death. Now, this situation is the idea of creating cleansing to all the time that you share with agenda, to all the time that you supposedly wanted to connect to the Creator, but you just wanted some benefit. You have to cleanse all the time that we were engaged with things for the sake of getting something in return. That's eventually you will have to be cleansing that. Therefore, we always recommend to do the work without the agenda, without it. Why? Because you, either way, you're going to come back to clean it. So you might as well do it right from the beginning. Now, it's very hard. It's very hard to do things, to share without agenda, to give without wanting something in return. It's very difficult. I might as well not do it until I'm really, really focused. Also, you can, need to keep doing it until you completely remove the selfishness or the desire to receive for the self alone that is attached to every action or every thought that you have. Why? As I said before, you're going to come back to cleanse that. Any agenda, anything that we had, you might think, oh, I've done this event and helped so many people. Oh, I gave a donation. Oh, I, I study was amazing. You have to come back to cleanse all the selfishness that was attached to that in a hidden way, in a revealed way. You're going to come back. So again, the cleansing is the cleansing of the agenda or the attachment to the desire to receive for the self alone. Why? Because the Kabbalist says that mavet, death, is only attached to the desire to receive for the self alone. He says, Veraglea yordot mavet, which means anytime you have, you have a desire to receive for the self alone, agenda that is attached to any of your action, any of your connection, that leads to death. That is death. So he says, we have to be after the death. We remove, the, to meaning to, to do things like we after, the, we passed, right? Uh, Pesach, we passed the desire to receive with the self alone. I don't want to engage with that. I go straight to Kelim Dashpa. I, I go straight to influence, which is that's the original vessel that we have. The original vessel that we all got is a vessel of influence, kelim da'ashpa, vessel of light. But it has to be, first of all, before we activating that vessel, obviously that's Passover is all about, you have to go through the death, through the death. What is the death? Right? Shne bnei Aaron. One is, is to kill, the completely to remove the death, to the death, or to be in a way of the death of the desire to receive for the self alone. And the death to the desire to receive, uh, 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 the desire to receive that is attached to sharing as well, which is almost similar, but it's the same idea. Now the passing of the sons of Aaron, Nadav and Avihu, represent huge cleansing by the Zohar. He says that they cleansed so much of negativity in this world when they left the world. Why? How? And think about it. Have you ever went to a funeral? Hopefully never in your life. But happened to be that we are around that, you know, cycles of life. So as many times that I, I you know, either need to you know, to perform the ceremony or even being present there or whatever it is. And interesting enough, you never hear somebody goes in a, on a podium or in a speech or next to the gravesite when they bury somebody and speak bad about that person, right? Have you ever heard that? No. All of a sudden, you think like, wow, I wish I would meet that person. Even sometimes I, I would go and... To somebody I don't even know, I, I will do the, the funeral, and people speak about that person, 
so high. It's like, oh my God, I wish I'd meet that person, right? Any person that you go, amazing, the most righteous person. So I'm saying to myself, is it real? Is it for sure real what's going on here? Uh, and again, I can tell you, it's absolutely real. Why? Even though if the person, I don't even think or maybe sure that the person thinks this way, that speaks highly about that person who passed. But what really happening is spiritually, energetically, is because the person left the physical world, what does it mean? He left the desire to receive for the self alone, is not attached to him anymore. Because when the person died, is the desire to receive for the self alone leaves. That's the klipa, it leaves. So what left is what we call, or every Israel call it the matzav hayuli, the most, the most raw, the most beautiful part of the individual energy remain. Because all the selfishness, all the, it died. What remain is the connection to the soul of the person. That's why they can only speak good about it. Only speak good about the person who left. Now, can we be after death, after achrei mot, right now? Can we first see the people in our life without the selfishness attached to them? Can I be achrei mot? Can I be looking at somebody? It's as if after the death of their desire to receive for the self alone, their ego that bothers me from connecting to them. Can I be in that level? This is what we want to request. Because I can tell you, my, in, in our line of duty, I'm assuming uh, all the teachers want to connect to the students, meaning seeing them after they imagine that person without the ego attached to them. Wow, what an amazing thing. Imagine that students that connected them, you know, you see them doing something wrong, or you see them behaving wrong, or you see them speaking bad, or speaking so low in your, in your mind. No, I know, I want to connect to them, I'm connecting to them in their perfected level, without the attachment to, to the negativity. That's the hardest thing to do. But therefore, this week gives you that energy, that source of light to connect to that level. Connect to that level that everything I'm connected to is the connected to after the death of the desire to receive for the self alone. Not to the physical thing. Now, and by the way, this is, this is the main work that we want to understand over here. And Ravasha writes, because when you cancel or when you create a death, for the desire to receive for the self alone, your influence grown so much. And it's Rav Ashak writes, and I read it in Shabbat, I'm gonna read it again because it's very powerful, very short. Rav Ashak writes, Ikar avodata adam, the main work of human being, tzarich liot ech lavo velargish ta'am beleashpia. It's to come to the level that, or how to come to a place where we feel the flavor, the taste, we tasting the energy that there is in influence. Most of us wants to be influence, influential in this world, right? Either in social media or influence around ourselves or influence with our family, influence with money, influence with fame, influence with, with, with a sick, it doesn't matter. But we all have a desire to influence. But we haven't yet felt the taste of that. We haven't tasted it. Again, for example, a lot of people that are in the center or in Kabbalah, when we ask them, you know, mentor others or share with somebody something that you learn, right? Why? Because only when you share that, that's when you start feeling or you're tasting it. When you share anything, by the way, you taste some influence. But because when we share, there is some attachment to, to, you know, seeing results from them, seeing the effect of that, seeing the, how they respond to you, that limits your flavor. And Rav Ashak writes, this is what we need to understand. Because all what a person, everything that we do, 
that is only benefiting us, merachegit oto ma'ashem. This is put you in distance from the, from your Creator, put you in distance from your light, because of it's a different form. The form of the Creator, the form of 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 our, you know, the form of our being is a form of hashpa'a, influence. This is who the true form. But when you have a desire to receive from what you influence, you indifference than that. It's two different, two different vessels. So when you're using a vessel of influence, and then you're trying to receive, you cannot activate the vessel of influence. Because even though it's the smallest action, or the biggest action, right? It doesn't matter when it's attached to something of... Of, a, of, of, of benefiting me only, so eventually it, stay, it takes me away from the creator or from the vessels of influence that you have inside of you. But if you are doing the work and you completely, it says, Ikari Shtadlu, the main effort that you need to do this, this week is to taste what does it mean, real influence? And I can tell you, real influence is very hard. It's very hard. A lot of us influencing. A lot of us influencing with knowing or unknowingly. We're influencing a lot of people. Even you know, sometimes, even I, now, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching here or sharing with you, right? I don't know who is going to listen, who is going to influence. But I know for sure that at the time that I share this, it's when I'm connected to the vessel of influence. But probably after the class, when I don't share the wisdom, uh, it's debatable. It's debatable because now you're in the world of lies. There's two reality, the world of lies and the world of truth. The wisdom immediately connects you to truth. Immediately. You can't share the wisdom and lie. You can't. You can try, because once you try to lie with the wisdom, you need to know the wisdom will take you away. It will be what we call sama mavet chaz v'shalom. It's the drug of death. When you use the wisdom for your own benefit, when you share the wisdom and you, you think to bring lies or to lie about it or to make it something that is not, the wisdom itself will take you away. So what I know that when I share this wisdom, this is the only time I'm connected to the truth. It's the only time. That's why I, I rather share it all day long. Put people in front of me all day long to share, right? Because this is the only time I'm connected to the truth. Right after that, after this class, I'm connected to the world of lies. Now, I have to check. Wait a second. Because check, when you share, I don't share of me, I share the wisdom. Therefore, it's nothing to do with me. But then right after, there's questions. Who deserves, who's not deserve, who's yes, who is no, who is right and who is wrong. That's the reality. Only in the time of sharing, really sharing the wisdom, it's the only time I connect to the truth. And how much do I want to do it? All day long. So in that moment, we need to understand when, when, when we not, inf again, even now, I know that the sharing of this wisdom right now, the wisdom of Kabbalah, influencing the world spiritually, and happen to be someone, one person listen to it, influence to the rest of the world. Just one person, because human beings are all connected. Whether we see the influence today or not, it's... Makes no difference. What makes the difference is where you come from. And again, what Rav Ashak says, the Ikara Ishtadlut, the main effort is to be, to taste, what does it mean to really influence? And once you taste it, as a student of Kabbalah, as a student of spirituality, you cannot feel the light if you don't have influence there. And the way to get closer to real taste of influence is al yedei shememaatin bekoach hamargish tam bekabalat smit 
to reduce, and Rav Ashek says, slowly, slowly, reduce the flavor or the, or the taste that there is in receiving for myself. Slowly, slowly to work on the, the I wanna, you know, it's just, it feels good to get some pleasure. But I want you to start slowly, reduce the force that we get from the feelings or the energy that we get from the feeling of we received something. Like, for example, somebody says something good about you. Wow, I'm so happy. Like, it feels so good. Try less. Slowly reduce the need or the desire to feel the pleasure of receiving for myself. Slowly, right? Again, it speaks about Moshe, why he merited, because when the Creator called him, he ran away from that. A lot of us, if we've been calling to something greater, a lot of us will chase after that. Or even if we're not going to do it, it's going to be from ego point of view. Oh, no, I don't want to do it because I, I don't want to be embarrassed. Oh, I'm not good enough. Eh, most of us from that area. Moshe, the only reason Moses was completely reject the light is because he says, I'm not going to be able to handle it without any pleasure without taking pleasure in being with the light. Therefore he married. Therefore he gained greatness. Because he knew he's not going to be able to handle without receiving for the self alone. And because he knew that, that changes. Again, there's, there's one thing that I want to share with you about it because in this week, in Achrei Mot, he says, in, in one of the verses, it says, Ha-shochen itam betoch tumotam. That the light of the Creator is there with you in, in, in the midst of your negativity. Tuma, it's negativity, but impurity. So wait a second. How is it possible that the mighty Creator, the light so pure, can be in an impure place? Unheard of. This is this week. Listen to the beauty. How does he say, the Kabbalist says, that the light of the Creator rests within me, within me and my impurity? That doesn't make any sense. Afal Pishan may, even though they are impure, even though they are filthy with ego, filthy with negativity, it's still the light of the Creator is with us. In another verse, he says, in the, the, the verses is, verse speaks about that kol adam sheyesh bo gasut ruach, meaning any man, any individual that have, any individual that have ego, he says, en ani vehu yecholim ladur beoto olam. I cannot be in a room, the creator cannot be in a room if the person have ego. Wait a second. In one hand, you say that the light of the Creator is rest within us, even within our impurity. The next verse says, if somebody enters to the room and he has ego, the light of the Creator has to come out. So how do you say that? This is the beauty of, of, the, of, of the Kabbalah. And the Rav Ashrak says, כאשר האדם מתעטף בהצטלה של צדקנות והוא אינו רואה פגם בעצמו. When a person is thinking about himself as righteous, right? I'm pretty good, I'm a good person, I'm pretty right about what I think, and most of the time when I say something right is always right. When a person is always seeing themselves as right, as good, as pure, I have a pure intention. And a lot of people, I'm telling you, have that. You know, maybe they don't tell you, maybe, but I have a pure intention. I'm a pretty good person, right? And he says, and still they say, yes, gruimi many. And you know what? <laughs> and and, and Ravashek says, and, and they also tell themselves, you know what? There's so many worse people than me, you know? I'm pretty good. You know, you know how bad people are? 
compared to, you know, compared to them, I'm, I'm righteous. That's what people do. <clears throat> and he says, this is a complete lie. You compare yourself or you think there's other people worse than you. That consciousness is an enani ve'u yecholim ladu. That, whoever have that consciousness, the light of the Creator run away from the room when you enter. <coughs> but, כאשר אדם מבקר את עצמו, הוא מוצא שהוא עדיין בתוך תאומה. And he says, but if an individual constantly aware of their impurity, constantly aware and working to reduce the attachment to the desire to receive for the self alone, then the Creator will be with you even if you are impure. So I, I hope that's clear because it's so beautiful. You can choose even though you're not perfect yet, even though you're not there yet, even though you, you, you understand your ego is there, the light can be with you. But when you think, I'm pretty good, I don't need too much, I'm, I'm, I have a little changes to make, you know, uh, you know, compared to my, my family, oh, I'm the most righteous, compared to my friends, look at them, you know. A lot of us doing that. That, the light of the creator cannot be with you. So again, this is a beautiful, beautiful understanding because one is when we attached ourselves to the desire to receive for the self alone, we are in death. This is death because eventually the bottom of the bottom of any desire to receive for the self alone is death. It's meant to be despair from this world at some point. We're not going to want to receive for ourselves alone anymore, right? Anyone who tries to take, take, take all their life, eventually they, they can't take it anymore and they need to commit suicide. That's what it is. Or if, if a person is give, 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 give with the attachment to the desire to receive for themselves alone, it's the same thing. They also want to commit suicide. That's what it is. That's what the negative side does. That's what Satan does. So slowly to work on. In these weeks of the Omer, in the week of the, the stronger desire that wants to kick in into our vessel, we have to be achremot. We need to start working on the death of the desire to receive for the self alone within us. Slowly, slowly. Whether if it's like, you know what, I'm about to eat ice cream. If you cannot control yourself, eat the ice cream and take pleasure. But if you can, slowly, slowly, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I want to eat the whole pint, whatever, the whole box. But I'm gonna enjoy that much because I feel the desire to receive takes over me. So I'll A, take two bites and I'm gonna resist the desire to receive. Make some steps, some progress this week. That's what you wanna do, a progress. Progress, it means it mean that you move from one step to another. Progress means that when you slowly, slowly reduce the desire to receive for the self alone from what I want to receive right now, or I didn't get the, the reward that I thought so, I didn't get the words, I didn't get the, the, uh, the excitement that I thought I'm going to get, I didn't get the messages, great! This is when you start to feel the influence. What do you mean? I don't, this is when you want to remove the desire to receive for the self alone. And slowly you're gonna start feeling tremendously great from sharing the wisdom. Remember, anytime you share the wisdom, you are connected to the truth. Anytime you're not sharing that, it's calculative, it's agenda. So, obviously, slowly, slowly, when you share the wisdom, but you have to think about slowly also working on receiving less pleasure from that. And, uh, and you start going to, you're going to start feeling the taste, the flavor that there is in real influence. Not fake influence that two seconds, ago, you know, a lot of people have this fake influence over the media. And... They have hundreds and thousands and millions of followers. Those followers can 
unfollow you in two seconds when they see the lies about you. That's why it's all fake. A lot of that is fake. Therefore, we don't know who to believe and who not. But if we realize it's fake, eventually, boom, we, can't, we stop following that. Right? Or you realize that person supporting this, or that person said a comment that, or the person has something to say about women, or the person has something to say about men, or whatever it is, or, or, or any of gender, I'm done with that. Right? A lot of people following, unfollowing, influence, uninfluence in two seconds. We know it's not real influence. So don't, not to follow, to, not to fall into that. To think that that's, that's real influence. And to use our influence from a real place. And for that, we need to be achreimot. We need to be after the death of the desire to receive. So again, I said, start practicing as well, connecting to people in your life without their selfishness. Visualize that. Can I connect to them without their desire to receive for the self alone? Without their ego. Wow. It's going to be amazing. Uh, uh, um, and then start communicating that level. Start to reduce the intensity, the, the pleasure that I'm receiving from anything selfish. And slowly share the wisdom. Find ways to share the wisdom because that's the only time you connected to the truth. Remember, when I share this wisdom, you feel energized right away. You feel the light right away. When you share lies, you don't feel the, the light or you don't feel anything. But slowly, 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 it completely disconnects you. You have to remember that. With the truth, right away. With lies, slowly, slowly, the disconnect. This is, this is the system. Um, yeah. This is the key, the simplicity that we have this week. Just want to leave you with that simple way of thinking, simple way of working, and very practical and obviously relatable to the period of time that we are, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a way, this world. We see it's very hard. Even in New York, you see all what's happening in universities and and the hatred in the world that is, arises in Israel, in the world, we need to be after this death of the negativity, you know, and, and, and we need more people to do this work. So let's activate Pesach by the counting of the Omer. Find ways that you are not accountable and be accountable. Find ways if you can be trusted and make Make sure you can be trusted and work on these areas of your life. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the week.